Don Bowman has a uh, message here. Where is Don? Any other announcements? Okay. Uh, tomorrow, Monday, the Pastoral Selection Committee will be meeting at 5.30 here at the church. If you can't get here right at 5.30, that's okay. Just try to get here by 6 o'clock. Thank you. Okay, we'll start church with the ringing of the bell. Good morning. We gather again on this Sabbath morning to celebrate the new life that we have in Christ Jesus. We come together as sisters and brothers in Christ. We are reminded, as St. Paul said, it is a time to rejoice, to rejoice in the goodness of God, to rejoice in our gathering together, and to rejoice in the promises that is ours in Christ Jesus. We invite you to rise as you're able as we begin with our call to worship. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change. Come. Behold the works of God. Let us join together and sing praise and thanksgiving.
St. Paul writes, lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. For there is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling. For there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, your generous goodness comes to us new every day. By the work of your Spirit, lead us to acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Exalted, the King is exalted on high. I will praise Him. He is exalted, forever exalted, and I will praise His name. He is the Lord, forever His truth shall reign. in his holy name. He is exalted, the King is exalted on high. Be seated as we invite the children forward. Good morning. Who are you waving to? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So, guess what's going to happen this week? What? There's a special day that will happen this Bible week. Bible school? Well, there's Bible school auction back there, but something else is going to happen this week. I don't know. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. You ever hear of Thanksgiving before? Mm -hmm. So, what does Thanksgiving mean to you? Do you eat a lot on Thanksgiving? Do you have turkey? Boo. Do you eat turkey? Boo. Turkey? <laughs> huh? Okay, so Thanksgiving is a very special day, and it means many things to all of us. It means, first of all, that God has given us all of this. God has given us each other, and all the stuff we have in this world. So you see what's up on the picture there? What's up there? Uh, Is that you with a turkey? turkey. It's, yeah. So who gets to make the turkey this week? Are you getting up early to make the turkey? Yeah. You are? Okay. <laughs> are you going to help make the turkey? How about the mashed potatoes? So Thanksgiving is a very special day. Now, I thought that maybe what we would do for the children's sermon today is there, there's some people wandering around back there, but there's some very special pies and whoopie pies and all kinds of goodies. I wonder if we should go back and taste any of it. <laughs> you know, now, Tim's sitting in the middle there, but I think we can get around him. But I don't think they would like that, would they? What? If we went back and started tasting all the food. Yeah, yeah they wouldn't. Yeah. So we have to give Thanksgiving in another way about that kind of stuff. Okay. So did you get your tickets to put in? No. You didn't get any tickets. Yeah, yeah. yeah you have some. Yeah, okay. okay, good. Well, Thanksgiving is going to be very special for us because look at that. You know, we sit around the table, and we eat, and we watch the Cowboys lose. <laughs> Hopefully. 
But we do all kinds of things because families get together. And today is kind of a Thanksgiving for us as the church because we're kind of one big family here and we're all coming together to celebrate all the kind of things that God has given to us, right? Boo. So one of the ways that we celebrate that is we pray to God and we give thanks to God for all the kind of things that God has given us. So what would you like to thank God for today? Heartbeat. Your heartbeat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, because without that, we wouldn't be here, would we? What else would we like to thank God for? Our families? Our church? Can you think of anything else we would like? To? Yeah. Anybody else there? Think of what we would like to give thanks for today? Shout it out. Yeah. Good health. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of good talents that we have in the congregation. Yeah, so there's so many things to be thankful for. And one of the ways that Jesus told us to be thankful is is to pray to God because God knows that we need certain things and God will help us. So one of the ways Jesus taught us was to pray the Lord's Prayer. So can you pray with me the Lord's Prayer? Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. Now, I have the goodie bag. Yeah, so there are different things in there. Those are nutter butters. Guide us, O God, by your word and spirit, that in your light, in your truth, find freedom, and in your will, discover your peace. Hear the word of God in our first scripture, reading from Deuteronomy chapter 26, verses 1 through 11. When you have come unto the land, that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground, which you harvest from the land, that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket. And go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office, at that time and say to him, today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come unto the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Armenian was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien. 
few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voices and saw our affliction, our toil, our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here ends the first lesson. Hear the word of God in our second scripture, Philippines chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing these things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. <clears throat> Here ends today's lesson. May God add his blessings to the reading and the hearing of his holy word.
good and gracious and generous God, Father of all, we humbly bow before you at this hour to give you thanks for the gift of creation, for your presence in creation, for the gift of us and the gift of your church. Your generosity and your bounty reaches out in so many ways. And we ask, dear Lord, that you would receive these offerings so that we may continue to share the good news that is ours in Christ Jesus. To share in all the provisions you have provided, to listen to you, to follow in your ways, so that all might be able to celebrate your goodness, your generosity, and your promises that last everlasting. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. When the disciples found Jesus on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you, for it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So again they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it was, not, it was not from Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Then Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Holy Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, only a few more days until Thanksgiving. People will have off work, schools will be closed, families will gather together around the table, and they will eat turkey and mashed potatoes and all the other kind of trimmings and maybe even some cranberry sauce. But Thanksgiving is much more for us as Christians than simply a day off of work, a day off of school, and an opportunity for families to gather together around the table. It is a time to remember, to remember our relationship with God and therefore our relationship with one another. Now, when we look at the Old Testament, there's a Hebrew word for giving thanks. And that word in Hebrew for giving thanks is related and rooted to two other words. The one is to hear properly and to obey. Those three understandings of that root word, to give thanks, to obey, and to, in a sense, to relate to what's going on in this world. Now, normally, I think that when we gather together as the church and we talk about thanksgiving, we give thanks to God for all that God has done and continues to do to 
have an awareness of, of all the provisions that God has given to us. And when we hear from the book of Moses in Deuteronomy, we hear that, yes, we are to give thanks for all the provisions that God has provided for us, but maybe more importantly of just giving thanks to God for all the provisions is that we need to be aware of how to share those provisions with all of God's children in every time and in every place. That is, our thanksgiving comes with some responsibility and some accountability. That is, as Moses taught the people, that when they were coming out of the wilderness into the promised land, it was an opportunity for them not only to be thankful for the provisions that God has given to them, but to understand those provisions properly and to be able to share those provisions in a proper way. So when we talk about giving thanks to God, yes, we are to be aware. We are to look around and see all that God has given to us particularly like this time of the year, the bounty of the harvest and to be able to share those harvests with all people. But it's much more than that. You see, Moses instructed the people that one of the most proper ways to give thanks to God is to follow God's commandments, to follow the instructions that God has given to us. Moses was quite aware that in the journey out of Egypt through the wilderness into the land promised to be a land of flowing with milk and honey that God still provided for them and yet they grumbled about it in some ways. And Moses said that, that it is important for us not to simply be aware of what God has given to us, but to how to have a proper understanding of what that means for us. What does God's provisions mean for each and every one of us? In short, how do we take care of all that God has given to us? In Paul's letter to the Philippians, he talks about that in many different ways. He talks about how we take care of of the provision of ourselves. How do we take care of ourselves and one another in light of all that God has given to us? And it is to be aware, first and foremost, that God is with us. And because God is with us, that we can now have a proper understanding about how we treat one another by the sharing of all of God's provisions. Paul talks about whatever is true and whatever is honorable and whatever is right and whatever is trustworthy. Those things are important as we carry out, in a sense, both the responsibility and the accountability of being God's children. In the Gospel of John, we heard Jesus talking to his disciples because their bellies were full and they seemed to be satisfied with that. But it's more than simply having our bellies full. It's also about an awareness of how did we get there? How did we get there? How did we get to have our bellies full? Well, as Jesus reminded the disciples, it comes from God. And because it comes from God, therefore, we are called to be able to share that and share that responsibly with one another. It is a reminder as Christians that as we approach this year's Thanksgiving, that there will be some people who will not have a turkey around the table. There will be those people even in our midst, we will have empty cupboards and empty refrigerators and will wonder where their next morsel of food will come from. That's why Moses reminded the people in, in 
Numbers and Leviticus and Deuteronomy that, yes, it's one thing to give thanks to God for all that God has given to us, but we have to have an expansive understanding of who that us is. It's just not us here. It's all of God's children. And we therefore need to find ways to be able to share God's provisions so that no one goes hungry. As St. Paul reminded the church, we are to lead a life worthy of our calling. For there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. There is one hope. But God wants all of God's children to have that same hope. It is a time not only to remember, but it's also a time to distribute. To distribute God's love in ways maybe that we haven't shown in the past. To distribute God's love to people whom we might have ignored in the past. It's a way to distribute God's hope in a world that sorely needs God's hope. If we remember back to that story with Moses and the people coming out of Egypt into the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and they grumbled, and yet God provided for them the manna from heaven. And instead of trusting day in and day out, that God provides, they wanted to store it away, keep it for themselves. And it rotted. It rotted before their very eyes. So that the gift of faith that God has given to us in Christ Jesus, the gift of faith that we are gathered here this morning to celebrate, is not meant just for us, but it's meant for the whole world that when we give thanksgiving to God, we are reminded of how expansive God is, how expansive God is with God's generosity and God's goodness, how expansive God is when God wants to reach out to the whole world and say to us that through His Son, We all become sisters and brothers in Christ from all walks of life, from all kinds of places, that we have become one. That is the prayer that Jesus himself shared with the Father, that he prayed that we will all be one as the Father and the Son are one. So as we engage in this time of thanksgiving, We not only give thanks to God for all that God has given to us, but we also give thanks to God for both the ability and the capability to share God's goodness with all of God's people. We give thanks to God for all the instructions that God has given to us so that we might walk rightfully, and righteously in the ways that God would have us live. Now sometimes our own wants and our own desires get in the way of what God desires for us. We know that in this world sometimes we act selfishly. Sometimes we ignore one another. Sometimes we hide ourselves behind closed doors. But Thanksgiving is the opportunity to recognize that God has given us both ability and capability, along with the responsibility and the accountability to go out into the world and to share God's provisions with one another. So maybe as we look forward to this Thanksgiving, this coming Thursday, we will pause for a moment to not only give thanks to God 
for what we ourselves have received, but we also give thanks to God for the little push that God has given to each and every one of us through this gift of faith. And that is what faith is. It is a push from God, a kind of gentle push to go out into the world and to share all that God has given to us. And maybe, just maybe, this coming year, there will be less cries of the hungry. There will be less cries of those who have fallen into despair. There will be less cries of those who just feel lonely, unaware because of their situation of God's goodness. And so maybe, just maybe, God's goodness will be revealed in us where our steps will take us where our hands will extend, what our eyes will see and what our ears will hear throughout the world. And so, Thanksgiving is an opportunity. It is an opportunity to follow God, to listen to the ways that God continues to instruct us to be the people of God. Because in the end, God doesn't want anybody left out. Amen. It is time as we gather together to share in our joys and our prayers and our concerns. Does the congregation have any joys, cares, and concerns that you would like to share? We want to give thanks to everybody who provided all the kind of goodies there. Uh, Tim, get your finger out of the pie. Oh, okay. Other joys and concerns to share? Very good, very good. Yeah. Other Thanksgivings? We knew what you meant. Yes. Yeah. Well, give, give thanks because he's arrived home safely. Yeah. Okay. Audrey Elizabeth. <laughs> Congratulations, yeah. Yeah. There there's like I said, there's something in the water around here. It's, <laughs> no, but it but the magic number seems to be four. Is four the magic number for you? Because everybody else is talking about four grand. Other joys and concerns.
Other joys and concerns? I would like to share a joy of some folks that came back from Florida, but guess what kind of weather they brought us? <laughs> but it's, it's a joy to have you back. <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of all, you are the creator of the heavens, the earth, and all that lie therein. We give you thanks for making your presence known to us. We give you thanks for you have instructed us through Moses and the prophets, through Jesus and the disciples to follow in the ways that you have shown to us. We give you thanks for the harvest, for the planting we give you thanks for the gift of faith and for your church. We give you thanks for the gift of life and the promise of life and life everlasting. We give you thanks for new life for Audrey Elizabeth and all other newborns. We give you thanks for the many ways that you gather us together to share in our talents, our abilities, and our hope. We give you thanks for the gift of your church to be a people who live by faith, hope, and love, who reach out to one another to share your goodness, to share your provisions, and most assuredly, to share your hope. We give you thanks for the many ways that your generosity pours out through each and every one of us. The generosity of those who shared their gifts and talents in today's Vacation Bible School auction. We give you thanks for the many ways that families will gather together this week to sit around the table, celebrate their life as a family, as a family in faith, and the hope that we will be able to continue into this future, bearing witness to your promise and the hope that you have in each and every one of us. We especially pray this day for those who need your tender and healing and loving care. For Marilee, for Rod, for Tony, for Linda, for Dolores, for Mary Lou, for Robert, for Brian, and for all others whom we name before you now. We give you thanks for all your children who reach out to others with a tender and loving embrace, with the gifts of healing and hope. And we ask, dear Lord, that through your generosity, you would continue to guide us and direct us, that we too may be instruments of your peace, of your healing, and of your hope. Help us to celebrate this day all that you have given to us and give us the strength and the purpose to reach out to one another in the sharing of that generosity and that hope. Help us to be a church that recognizes the promise of life 
and life everlasting that you have given to us when we believe in you, when we walk in your ways, and when we follow your will. Continue to guide us and direct us this day as always as we celebrate with one another that as the Father and Son are one, so too shall we be one. We pray all this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. May we join together as we rise and sing, Come, ye thankful people, come. Brothers and sisters in Christ, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. We will go out with joy in the Spirit. We will go out with God. 
We will go out with joy in the Spirit. We will go out with God. Alleluia. We will go out with joy. Alleluia. Alleluia. Now anyone who's born of the Spirit, sing a new song of joy. Now anyone who's born of the Spirit, sing a new song of joy. Alleluia, we will go out with joy. Alleluia, alleluia. We will go out with joy in the Spirit, we will go out with God. Ah! 
Diego.